Since its inception in the 1980s, Ethernet has evolved at an ever-increasing rate. It's not just speed and media types that have been extended. Think of VLANs, prioritization, multicast control, rate limiting, and redundancy techniques. But there is one topic that has been beyond the reach of Ethernet. That function is reserved bandwidth. But today, as industrial Ethernet networks are required to accommodate multiple groups of users, each of which want guaranteed performance for the applications, the ability to allocate bandwidth is more in demand than ever before. And now there's a solution. Time-sensitive networking, or TSN, was developed to support time-critical applications over standard Ethernet networks. It provides predictable network latency using a sophisticated mixture of prioritization and time division multiplexing, or time slots. In effect, it assigns prioritized traffic to time slots. Each time slot has the complete network bandwidth for a percentage of the time. In other words, the bandwidth is reserved per time slot, which is effectively what we want to achieve. Okay, my description of reserved bandwidth is a bit complex. So let me show you what I will achieve using a graphic. Here is a physical cable. In the case of this demo, it's the link between the two Bobcat switches. By default, the bandwidth is available equally to all applications. On this cable, I will create two data pipes, one for high priority traffic and one for low priority best effort traffic. Both data pipes will have a fixed bandwidth. The data throughput of one pipe will not be able to exceed its allocated bandwidth, even if there is available bandwidth in the other pipe. Before we go any further, I want to emphasize something. What I'm going to show you looks complicated, but it's the test setup which is complicated, not the TSN configuration. And the test setup is complicated because I need to achieve a lot without any real test equipment. If you have a fully equipped test lab, you could produce the same results with a much simpler configuration. But most of us do not have access to a test lab. So to begin with, let me explain my test setup. I have two Hirschman Bobcat switches named BRSA left and BRSB right. Port 8 on each switch is used for the uplink between them. My PC is connected to port 7 on BRSA. To demonstrate reserved bandwidth, I will need a lot of data traffic. I don't have a traffic generator. So I'm going to generate the traffic by creating loops in the network. On each Bobcat, ports three and four will be looped together. I will generate broadcasts for the loops by using a Raspberry Pi connected to port one of BRSA. In fact, any device which can generate broadcasts will work fine. For example, a second network card in the PC, or even another switch. 
I need to protect my PC and the switch agents from the broadcast storm. And I'm going to do that using VLANs. There are two VLANs. VLAN 7 contains port 7, which is the PC port, the switch agent, and port 8, which is the uplink port. VLAN 1 contains all other ports plus port 8. Let's set up the test environment. Before we get started, here is a quick tip. When I configure a VLAN for network management traffic, my PC will be cut off from the switch agent. So before I start, I'll connect my PC directly to the Bobcat I want to configure and use a port which will stay in VLAN 1, for example, port 5. First, I will configure BRSB and then I will do the same for BRSA. Under normal live operation, you would not want to create a network loop. So spanning tree is enabled by default. The first step I need to take is to disable it. The switch already has VLAN 1 by default. I will use this VLAN for the low priority traffic. Next, I want to create a second VLAN. I will use this VLAN for high priority traffic, which in this case includes network management traffic. In the VLAN configuration menu, create a new VLAN. I will use a VLAN ID of 7 because I will use this VLAN for Ethernet data with a priority of 7 and I like the numbering consistency. Port 7 will be used for the network management PC, so that needs to be moved to VLAN 7. Port 8 is the uplink between the Bobcat switches. So it needs to be tagged in both VLANs. Next, I need to put the switch agent into VLAN 7. The Bobcat notifies me that I need to add a port into VLAN 7 in order to communicate with the switch agent. As I described earlier, port 7 will be in VLAN 7. As soon as I click the OK button, I will cut myself off from the switch agent. My PC is in VLAN 1, the agent is in VLAN 7. So I'll move the PC to port 7, which I just put into VLAN 7. Now my PC should be able to communicate with the switch agent again. Just for confirmation, check the VLAN port status. The final step is to configure priorities. I first give the switch agent traffic a priority of 7. Then I do the same thing for port 7 where my PC is connected. Now I'll do the same configuration for BRSA. If you don't want to watch the configuration steps again, 
Use the chapters in the timeline below to move to the next section. OK, let's recap what we've done so far. To be clear, all I am doing at the moment is setting up a test environment. This has nothing to do with configuring TSN. My two Bobcat switches now support two VLANs. VLAN 1 includes all ports except port 7, and has a priority of zero. VLAN 7 includes port 7 and the switch agent and has a priority of 7. To complete the test environment, I'm going to cause loops in VLAN 1 on both switches. This will flood the uplink between the switches with broadcast data. Communication with both switches will still be possible as the management traffic is in a separate VLAN and has the highest priority. Let's take a look at what happens when I loop the network. On the right, you can see a simple tool called Real-Time Bandwidth Monitor from SolarWinds. The tool is free of charge and easy to set up. It shows incoming and outgoing bandwidth utilization. My PC is attached to BRS-A port 7, and I'm monitoring the uplink on BRS-B port 8. The small amount of data you can see on the chart is the SNMP packets from my PC to the agent of BRSB and the responses. The y-axis on the chart changes scale to reflect the data throughput. On the left, you can see a ping from my PC to the agent of BRSB. Actually, the ping is not necessary for the demo. It just makes me feel more confident when I can see the communication is working, even when the network is looped. Now I've created a loop in VLAN 1 on BRSA. So the uplink port on BRSB is being flooded with broadcast traffic from BRSA. Now I've also created a loop in VLAN 1 on BRSB. So the broadcasts are also being flooded back in the other direction. What you can see is 800 to 900 megabits per second of data flowing across the uplink in each direction. All these broadcast frames have a priority of zero. As there is no other traffic, the broadcasts are using as much of the bandwidth as possible. Now I'm going to configure TSN on the uplink between the Bobcat switches. I'll create the configuration quickly and I will not describe what I'm doing. If you have not seen the configuration technique before, Watch the part two video, which goes through the configuration in detail. 
If you would like to skip the configuration in this video, use the chapters function in the timeline below. I'll disconnect the loops while I configure the switches. OK, the configuration is finished. Let's check the bandwidth utilization. It's almost nothing because I've not reconnected the network loops yet. Let's do that now. There it goes. Actually, the utilization is no different to before. Let's look at the gate control list and it will be clear why there is no difference. First, I'll disconnect the loops. As you can see, almost the entire cycle time has been reserved for the low priority best effort time slot, which contains priority zero. So now let's try an experiment. I'll increase the amount of cycle time reserved for the high priority time slot, but only on BRSB. Let's reconnect the loops. You see what's happened? The outgoing traffic has been reduced because the time reserved for the best effort queue has been reduced. Even though there is spare bandwidth, it cannot be used by the best effort queue because it's reserved for the high priority queue. Actually, this asymmetric configuration is a bit unrealistic. So let's configure the uplink port on BRSA to be the same as BRSB. I reconnect the loops and there we go. The best effort traffic is restricted to 60% of the bandwidth. Or to put it another way, 40% of the bandwidth is reserved for the high priority traffic. It's not relevant whether the bandwidth is being used or not. It's reserved. To prove the point, I'll reserve even more bandwidth for the high priority traffic. Let's reconnect the loops. Finally, I'll configure the bandwidth reservation for something more likely in the real world. Let's reconnect the loops. And that brings me to the end of what I wanted to show you. Just to reiterate what I said previously, 
The complex task is setting up the test environment. Configuring the TSN is quite easy. You've seen two things in this video. First, a real world example of how TSN can be used to guarantee reserved bandwidth in an Ethernet network. Second, a cool way to demonstrate how TSN gate control lists work. Whichever of these turns out to be the more useful for you, I hope you learned something meaningful from the videos.